I'd like to call tonight Somerset Planning Board meeting to order. Dana, please call the roll. Ron Mahulier? Here. Jason Berry? Here. Jeremy Rhodes? Here. Chris Horton? Here. Mark Richardson? Here. Doug Haberman? Here. David Witham? Here. And Robert Belmore? Here. At this time, I'd like to appoint Mr. Haberman as full voting member for the evening. First item is approval of the minutes of December 20, 2023 Planning Board meeting. Mr. Chairman, move to accept the minutes. Motion made by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Barry. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed, abstain. I abstain. Committee reports. City Council report, Mr. Witham. Thank you, it should be brief this evening. Uh, the new council and mayor were sworn in. Um, a couple of weeks ago for the uh, for the new uh, two-year term uh, I can report that I will remain as the council rep to the planning board and councillor Vincent will remain as the alternate rep you did have on your desk tonight the letter from Paul Goodwin obviously uh, cannot have two city council members here so uh, he will not be on the planning board anymore just as a matter of uh, uh, city uh, charter um, so there's that uh, I will also note that uh, Mayor Girding has formed a special commission to look at housing uh, here in the Hilltop City, sort of a pretty broad brush approach to look at uh, housing here in the city, uh, affordability, accessibility, uh, and how can we as a city help with that, uh, either through zoning amendments or other uh, policies and practices. <coughs> Uh, he has requested that there be a representative from the planning board on that commission. I believe the chairman is aware of that. We might address that later this evening. So um, that's my report for tonight. Thank you. Land use board reports. You have your summary. Does anybody have any question on the land use board reports? Next, Stratford Regional Planning Commission update. Mr. Richardson. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, we'll be meeting this Friday for uh, getting back to our monthly regular schedule. Uh, in the interim period, though, we've been looking at the uh, guideline requirements and weighing them for the next round of uh, transportation projects that are being proposed. Um, I mean, the criteria are safety, mobility, uh, network significance, state of repair, natural hazard resilience. Uh, equity and environmental justice. Uh, I'm not sure what the next word. Accessibility, uh, environment, uh, economic development, and support from the community. Um, those are the criteria that we look at and weigh uh, each individual, individual each individual project on. So that's what we've been kind of doing in the interim period via email and all that kind of thing, so we'll be discussing that. Uh, right, thank you. Yeah, there's seven projects that are up and none of them are from Summersworth. We got <coughs> a number of projects ahead of the, what's up on, coming up in the next round, so. That's, thank you. Yep. Uh, 23rd Committee, Mr. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have not yet met since our last meeting, so we're still trying to figure out the date and the time of the next meeting in February. Right, thank you. Community Power Coalition, Mr. Horton. Uh, <clears throat> the Community Power Coalition has adjourned for the time being. Uh, I think most recently the public utility, the, uh, actually no, sorry, the New Hampshire Coalition accepted our application uh, for the electric aggregation. And then uh, I think it uh, uh, has more prior to that. So PUC did as well. PUC did as well. So uh, we, we have not met since uh, our original uh, adjournment when the plan was progressed uh, to city of, uh, state officials. And uh, I think we're just looking for the chairman if we need to get back together again and uh, when that may be. So uh, it, we're on a hiatus for now. Anything you guys would like to add? No, it's accurate, Chris. So thank you. Uh, the, it, it's, it's kind of now back with uh, the Community Power Coalition now that all of our sort of approvals have been in place uh, for uh, a proposed launch date, again, maybe uh, mid-year. Uh, but that's dependent upon their rate as compared to the Eversource rate. I think as we've all probably read in the paper, the Eversource rate has come down substantially. Uh, so 
again, for us to launch, the community power rate needs to be lower than the Eversource rate. So that's the one sort of thing that we'll be monitoring. Ms. Bowman? Well, not to belabor it, but um, it also needs to go back to City Council. A couple of other agreements need to be, uh, I need to get authorization as manager to sign before we can launch. So there's a couple of, a couple more steps before we can launch it. Okay. But progressively. Thank you. At this time, uh, as uh, Mr. Uh, Witherman mentioned, uh, Mr. Goodwin uh, tendered his re resignation from the Sunset Planning Board. I'll have Director Mayors read the uh, letter. <coughs> Dear Mayor Girding and Chair LaHoulier, I'm writing to provide you with my resignation as an alternate on the Summersworth Planning Board, effective January 16, 2024. The decision is prompted by increased obligations resulting from my recent election to the Summersworth City Council. The demands of my new role require my undivided attention, making it the best interest of the city and the planning board for me to step down as alternate. Serving on the planning board has been a, a rewarding experience and I appreciate the insights gained during my tenure. I extended my sincere appreciation to Chair LaHoulier and the entire board for your mentorship and the opportunity to contribute to the city's planning process. Collaborating with the dedicated individuals of the planning board, board who share my passion for Summersworth betterment has been an honor. I look forward to continuing partnership with the board and strong collaboration with Mayor Girding in my capacity as city council member. If I may be so bold, the planning board is one of the most influential and consequential appointments within the city. While I admire the work of the board, I also hope, have hope that a future board will better reflect both the diversity of professionals and shape the built environment, namely more design-based professionals, including architects and engineers, as well as demographic representation that better reflects the diversity of our great city. I believe that a more diverse board will aid our shared objective of making Summers Earth a vibrant community for all. Thank you again for your support, and I'm excited to continue making advancement and shaping the future of Summers Earth together. Paul Goodwin. Thank you. We wish Mr. Goodwin good luck on his new endeavors. Next item is old business. Is there any old business that may come before the board this evening? Do you recommend this? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Next, we'll get into new business. At this time, I'd like to ask anybody to, uh, everybody to please turn off and mute your cell phones or electronic devices. Also, if anybody cares to speak this evening, please come up to the podium, speak into the microphone because it is being televised. Uh, you, if you need to stray from the podium, we do have a portable mic you can <coughs> use. And uh, st please state your name and address or your affiliation. Item A, 4A, new business. EFI Motorsport is seeking a site plan amendment to add used car sales to an automotive repair service station on property located at 20 Rescue Lane in the Industrial I District, Assessors Map 58, Lot 6G, site number 13, 2022. Director Mayor, is there anything to add? Yes, so the applicant is seeking to establish used car sales to the existing motor vehicle repair garage use. The applicant is not proposing any uh, alterations to the existing building. Applicant received a variance in August 2023 to allow used automobile sales with the following conditions. There shall be no more than 12 cars displayed at any one time on site and that used automobile sales are an accessory use to the primary use of motor vehicle repair garage station. The applicant uh, has submitted all required information for a complete application. There are a number of waiver requests from the site plan regulations. Okay, all set. The, the plan is ready for uh, acceptance. Entertain a motion to accept the plans. Mr. Horton. I move that we accept the plans as complete. Motion by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Witham. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Motion carries. This time I'd like to invite EFI Motorsports to make their presentation. Thank you. Um, really not much to add. Um, uh, thanks for reviewing the plans. Um, the only thing I saw on the notes as I was reading in my email, um, there was a request that the drawings be re-stamped by the engineer. Is that correct? Did I read that in the requirements? Yes. 
Um, the, so, and also there was a, a note in there about uh, sewage uh, uh, piping application by the building owner, is that correct? Or maybe it was water, maybe or both. Yes. Um, may I ask that the requirement for stamp drawings be on the burden of the owner of the building for that part of the application, since obviously as a tenant I have nothing to do with any of that? I don't hear the applicant, so. Well, but the like stormwater obviously doesn't have anything to do with a used car dealership, or at least the application portion of the, the parking as far as I can tell. Uh, the sewer, water and sewer connection permit, is that what you're asking about? Correct, yes. Yeah. Typically, it's uh, the tenant that fills that up information out. But uh, how would a tenant have anything to do with the water and sewer of a building if, that they don't own? It's based off the usage, and if your use is not increasing, typically you don't have to pay any uh, kind of permit. I guess my confusion is, so the, the drawings I borrowed from Favorite Foods, because they were doing a, a, pro a project on the building for something unrelated. They were planning on building a um, food, food processing plant in the building I currently occupy. So I used those drawings as the basis to provide you with the parking layout and, and storage area for, for the vehicles on site um, with permission from Favorite Foods. Um, but to go back to the engineer and ask them to stamp the modified drawings, they would ask me to essentially, you know, reapply for a drawing, which is going to cost a bunch of money. So I, I don't know. I just wanted to see if I could potentially waive that requirement. Do you have any more in your presentation? Um, there was mu not much to present here other than what's already been submitted, the, uh, the drawings and the stuff I think you've already reviewed. Uh, okay. Uh, with if, you that, have, if you have questions for me. I'll open the public hearing. Is there anybody uh, here to uh, comment on this application? Is there any correspondence concerning this item? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close the public hearing. Turn to questions from the board. Mr. Horton. Sure, I'd like the, applic uh, the applicant, uh, maybe if you could kind of just take us through uh, the photos that were submitted. Yeah. Uh, talk, talk about your uh, site layout and some of the drawings that were included in that mm -hmm. and maybe your overall intentions for the site. Sure. Any site improvements that you'd uh, like to make, that type of thing. Um, yep. So during the springtime, we have some planners that we put out front uh, to kind of neaten up the entrance to the building. Um, there's an entrance door you'll see in some of the photos where the EFI Motorsport vinyl is on the window. That's the primary customer entrance. Um, we have a, a large planter that we put there with seasonal flowers and that kind of thing. Um, it's nothing we put in our, our actual submittal, but it's just something we do to make the building look better. Um, recently, the landlord has replaced a couple of lights on the building, so the outdoor lighting is quite good. Um, we, uh, we do intend, I think we have to increase the size of our vinyl for uh, the used car sales purposes. There's a very strict requirement by the state to have specific height letters, so that may be something that we're going to have to do on the, on the side of the bump out to the building there that's visible in the photos. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much as planned, other than, of course, the addition of those handicapped parking spots that are going to appear there uh, at the front of the building per requirement by the state. So with them. I appreciate the <clears throat> walkthrough of some of the photos, uh, but I have to be frank. I, I have no idea where we're parking any of these cars. Are they already there? Because there's some pictures with cars there. In the pictures, there's a picture of a favorite foods truck. I have no idea what I'm looking at there. No, no problem. I'll, I'll, so I'll, I need some help just guiding me through what you, you're trying to you do. You got it. Uh, it might help to look at the uh, the actual site plan um, because that shows you kind of the top level view. Yes, that shows you the top level view of the building. So you get a kind of a better idea of, of what we're looking at. The right hand side of the building. So if you see the little dashed line um, that kind of runs through the building up to the little bump out where the front door is, that shows the subjugation of favorite foods portion of the building versus our portion of the building. So everything to the right of that dashed line belongs to Favorite Foods. So that's where they're parking their trucks. That's where they're, uh, they just bought a business, I think, Donahue Brothers Coffee. Um, so there's a there's actually a coffee station in there where they repair some of the, um, the coffee equipment, that kind of thing. So some of their vans and things will get parked in those spots directly in front of that portion of the building. Um, and then, of course, their trucks park. Um, if you look across from the building, there's several spots. And in the photos, you'll see the trucks that are there in the photos. 
that's where they park their, their large delivery trucks that store their refrigerated goods that ship out in the morning. So everything to the left of that, that's our portion of the building. Um, customers generally park directly in the front of the building there, um, where you see the new ha proposed handicap spots as well as the few uh, blind normal spaces. That's where my customers are going to park. Um, and then around the back of the building, that's where predominantly we're storing vehicles that are in for service. Um, uh, my employees park, um, you know, the vehicles that we'll have for sale most likely would be parked there as well. And, and that area to the left that you describe, or mm -hmm. as we're looking at our uh, overhead here mm -hmm. t towards the bottom, mm -hmm. um, that, that is a paved surface? It's all paved there, yes. It is. And where that favorite foods truck is, mm -hmm. it looks like it's sort of partly on pavement, but maybe partly uh, No, that's off. correct. Yep. Which is a bit of an issue, I think, but... That's for you to bring up with them. Obviously, that has nothing to do with the gotcha. my side of the building. And Rescue Lane is a private roadway, so it, you cannot see your property from Interstate Drive. No, you cannot. Got it. And we do have the variance from the zoning board to allow for the used car sales here with the condition of no more than 12, I think I saw. We're a very specialty organization. Okay. Um, we don't rely on people cruising down 108 seeing these cars. So. Got it. Good for now. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? I entertain a motion for regional impact. I'll make a motion that has no regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Belmore, seconded by Mr. Rhodes. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Dive into a waiver request. Uh, waiver number one, section 10.2 specifications for plans and documents to be submitted, traffic study per 22A124. Does anybody have a motion concerning that waiver? Waiver of traffic study, Mr. Belmore. I'll make a motion um, to grant the waiver in regards to not requiring a traffic safety study. Motion made by Mr. Belmore. Second. Second by Mr. Witham. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Waiver is granted. Waiver item number two, vehicular circulation and parking. All sites shall provide lockable bicycle parking and storage. Number of bicycles which must, must be facilitated shall equal not less than 5% of the site parking demand. They do want a waiver from this item. Mr. Witham. I'd move that the request for the waiver from the bike rack be approved. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Horton. Discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver is granted. Waiver number three, traffic impact electrical vehicle charging stations, requirement to install EV charging stations. Mr. Uh, Witham. Yes, I'd make a motion to grant the waiver uh, not requiring electrical vehicle charging stations. Motion made by Mr. Witham, Thanks. second by Mr. Berry. Discussion? Mr. Witham. I do this with a little bit of hesitation because I think we need to, th this is a recent change to our, our site plan regulations and I don't want a line of people that keep requesting a waiver here because we'll be no further ahead. Uh, however, uh, in this case, they are adding absolutely no additional parking. It's all existing. Uh, the request is for the sale of the used cars in a very specialty market. Uh, I'm not sure that this is meeting the nexus for what we were thinking about when we required it. So uh, I think it makes sense in this case, but it's with some thought behind it. Mr. Haben. So th there won't be any uh, future need for any electric vehicles that you foresee in uh, your repairs or sales? Well, you know, I, I didn't say that. Um, I, did, I think I mentioned on the, app, uh, on the waiver, um, you know, we do service vehicles, and may I service electric vehicles in the future? Absolutely. And certainly, my, my building has 600 amps of three-phase electrical. There is plenty of 50-amp-plus receptacles in my building. If we're servicing an EV vehicle and need to charge it, it's not a problem. Any further discussion? Mr. Witham. Yeah, and again, I, I think 
you know, as you contemplate, as we contemplated this to put it in our site plan regulations, the thought was twofold. One, uh, employees that go to a business uh, with a EV car that may need to charge it. Again, it, that's not what we're considering here. Uh, and secondly, is a customer base that may require EV charging. Again, that's not necessarily what we're considering here. And to the applicant's point, the building has the power. If he's going to have cars that need that, it's going to be in his best interest to do that to support that customer base as needed. So again, I think I'm comfortable with this waiver in this particular instance, but I wanted to talk it through, so I appreciate that. Mr. Richardson. Just as a follow-up to that, would he have to come back here if he were to install EV charging, or is that something he can do through the planning office? Obviously an electrical permit. But <clears throat> it would be a minor field modification and then a building permit or electrical permit. Yeah. So that's fairly simple to do, so. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Waiver's granted. Waiver number four. Is again, electrical vehicle charging stations, the same as three. No, it should be no, landscaping. Four is landscaping. Yeah. Oh, four okay. <laughs> Thank you. Landscaping design standards. Waiver from anybody have a motion? Mr. Witham. Yeah, I move that we grant the request for relief from the landscaping design standards. Sorry. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Berry. Discussion? Mr. Horton. Uh, I'm in favor of the motion. I, ju I would just ask that uh, maybe some effort be placed on upgrading some of the landscaping. It, it is kind of looking a little... Uh, rough, we'll call it. So any, you know, some effort could be placed in that department. So I, I support the uh, the the waiver, but uh, also uh, agree that it could use some work. Mr. Witham? Yeah, I'd agree with Mr. Horton on that. Uh, again, if this were visible from a public way, uh, I think we'd have a whole lot more to say about this, but you're kind of buried at the end of that private way. Uh, so image is going to help your business not hurt it right? so uh, there you go any further discussion all those in favor raise your right hand Close. waiver is granted next is the site plan application uh director mayor's kid to review the conditions yes plan revisions include the following notes on the plan there shall be no more than 12 cars displayed at any one time on site that used automobile sales are an accessory use to the primary use of motor vehicle repair garage station conditions that must be met prior to final approval the plans shall bear the stamp and signature of uh, engineer and land surveyor uh, conditions to be completed prior to the start of site work the applicant shall apply for a new water and sewer connection permit conditions ac applicable during and after construction all parking areas shall be paved and there shall be no parking on unpaved areas. There shall be no wetlands uh, degradation during construction. A copy of the completed stormwater inspection maintenance log shall be provided to the Department of Development Services annually on or before July 1st. This is requirement shall be an ongoing condition of approval and noted on the final plans. All landscaping shown on the plans shall be maintained uh, and any dead or dying vegetation shall be replaced in a timely manner. All outdoor lighting shall be downlit and shielded. Thank you. I have two comments on that. Um, so one, the 12 vehicles displayed, I just want to make sure that we clarify that that's the vehicles for sale. Um, because obviously being a repair shop, we will clearly have more than 12 cars that we're working on and that sort of thing. So I would like that clarified. Thank you. Mr. Witham. Yeah, a couple of things just to, to talk through here. In uh, condition number two, uh, conditions that must be met prior to final approval, uh, we talk about the stamp and signature of the engineer, licensed land surveyor, uh, probably makes sense. Landscape architect, we're not doing any landscaping. No. So I think we could strike that. I don't, I don't think that's necessary. Um, 
And if we go to the conditions laid out in item four, conditions applicable during and after construction, uh, item D with regard to dead or dying vegetation, we're not planting anything. So I, I'm not sure that that's necessary either in this particular case. So I'd recommend removal of those two if there's no objection. And I'm very fine with the amendment, no more than 12 cars that are for sale. You all sound with that, Director Mears? Mr. Wood? Yeah, just to follow up on the cars for sale, because sometimes we, we wrangle with this with some other businesses in town that we deal with from a code compliance perspective. Uh, typically, vehicles for sale are not registered. Uh, vehicles that are being worked on are likely registered. So from a code compliance perspective, probably fairly simple for code compliance officer to observe that on any given day. It's tough for us sometimes because we sometimes work on race cars too. So we have stuff that is definitely never registered, um, but it's fairly obvious. No windshield, right. no like, right. you know, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. Contain a motion, Mr. Berry. No, just discussion. Discussion? Um, yeah, I'm still thinking about the the stamp. Um, so looking at the photos, there there's no paint down for parking spaces. So is it your intention to add paint to the to the parking? No. So the, where the vehicles are being serviced, there's no intention to add paint for marking because we're parking those vehicles. Customers aren't parking those vehicles. So clearly we stack the vehicles in accordance with, like, what's coming into the shop, what's being pushed, what's being driven. Mm -hmm. So markings don't really help in that case. It kind of hinders, actually. So the places that are currently marked and will maintain marking and probably will refresh while we're doing the, uh, the handicap spots are the ones out front that the customers will be pulling into. Right, and that's what I'm referring to is on the front side of the building because I see a whole bunch of lines here on the drawing. Um, but looking at the photos, there are none. It right? might be so, just be that they're worn. And, and that, that could very well be the case. So... I'm just trying to understand. So this was this was done by um, by favorite foods. This this whole Correct. okay. So that that's you're not touching it. You're not getting involved with it. The only thing that we will do, we are going to uh, stripe. If you look to the left of the area where the the handicap spots are, you'll see three spots, um, kind of you know to the left of where there are. We'll see one, two, three, four, or five, six spots. Those three might not currently be marked at all. In fact, okay. I'm pretty sure they aren't. We are sure. going to go ahead and add those lines. Okay. So I'm just trying to understand what what is the purpose of the engineer's stamp in this case? If they're not modifying anything and they're they're using an existing drawing that's already approved and on record, why why, are we, why do we require it? It's a requirement of the site plan regulations. Mr. Belbon, the plan that we have is already stamped by an engineer. Exactly. If if we're not modding it, why why do we need to make that a requirement? I guess the only one that might be in play is a surveyor. Um, can't seem to see a surveying, surveyor stamp. Um, unless Granite Engineering has it in the notes and I missed it, that it was surveyed by, surveyed by one of their staff or subbed out. I can certainly find that out for you. Um, basically, the um, there was an, an original submittal by Favorite Foods for their uh, plan to do um, food processing in that building. Uh, and that was done by Granite Engineering, uh, and they had it surveyed. So it, I'm very sure that it, it was, you know, done by a, a licensed civil engineer and, and by a site surveyor. So, so that stamp, just as a follow-up, that uh, surveying stamp should be easy. For the as long as you have no problem. Like, the drawing's different, of course. It won't have, like, I removed things from this drawing because there was additional drainage, things that were going to be done as part of that plan but are not part of the current building. So I removed those items from this drawing for clarity to show that really all I was interested in this drawing was the dimensions of the building as it laid out mm. and the parking. So, so this is basically an existing plan. Correct. Yeah, it's, it's to call it a site plan is actually inaccurate, right? So, so I question whether we even need a stamp at all. Now, granted, I'm open to discussion on that. Mr. Witham? I think we could leave the condition as it is. If the applicant believes that this satisfies that requirement, they could submit that, which may well be, and, and let city staff deal with it administratively. I think leaving the condition just makes sense. Uh, it's quite likely that this works and work with city staff. 
uh, to deal with that. It's easier to do it that way than to remove it and then city staff says, oh, we really needed to get this. Now we, it, it's easier just to leave it and let the applicant ensure that this is accurate, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm amenable to that, definitely. Right. Thank you. Well said. Any further discussion on the conditions? And it entertained a slight site plan, uh, Mr. Abram. Yeah, just just a little 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 thing. Just just cloud the uh, cloud the area that is your section of the building and your parking. Sure. Let's cloud around it so we can uh, identify it on record. Uh, do you have a preference on how that clouding would look? Just essentially some kind of dotted outline. Yeah, just okay. I can filling circles. I can do that. Okay. When I submit a uh, updated drawing just via email, is that all that's required? Okay. Any other discussion? Entertain the site plan motion. Mr. Witham. Thank you. I'd move that the request of EFI Motorsport LLC for site plan amendment to allow used car sales to an automotive repair service station on the property located at 20 Rescue Lane be approved with the conditions as outlined and modified here this evening. Motion made by Mr. Witham. Second. Second by Mr. Barry. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Site plan approved. Thank you. Next item on the new business, 4B, New Hampshire Home Buyers LLC, care of Bruton and Berebi PLLC is seeking minor subdivision approval to divide one residential lot into two resi residential lots on a property located at 44 Rocky Hill Road in the residential single family R1 district assessors map 26, lot 7, site number 22, 2023. Director Mears. Yes, so the applicant is proposing to subdivide an existing 1.375 acre lot into two lots that will be 0.65 acres and 0.72 acres. Lots will have street frontage on Rocky Hill Road and the existing house at 44 Rocky Hill Road is proposed to be uh, torn down. Uh, <coughs> staff recommends uh, the planning board vote on this application as being complete. Thank you. Okay, to entertain a motion to accept the application. So moved. Thank you. Motion made by Mr. Witham, second by Mr. Horton. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Application is accepted. At this time, I'd like to invite New Hampshire Home Buyers LLC to make their presentation. Thank you. Can we put the Sorry to make a move, Mr. Chair. Great. All right, here we go. Magic. Magic. Okay. Thank you. Um, my name is Josh Lanzetta. I'm an attorney at Bruton and Berube. I'm here this evening representing the applicant. Uh, with me, I have Ryan Fowler from James Vera and Associates. The addresses for our firm and for Mr. Fowler's firm are up on the board, but we'll read them into the record. Uh, the law firm is at 601 Central Avenue in Dover, and um, James Vera and Associates is located at 10 Shattuck Way, Suite 8 in uh, Newington. Um, it's nice to see you guys tonight. The last time I was here, I had a horde of angry abutters, and we were all wearing masks. So it's a, li it's a little bit better tonight. So it's good to see you guys. It's been a little while. Um, I'm gonna be really brief. You don't have to listen to me very long. We went to technical review. This is a very simple application. Uh, Michelle already read in all the dimensions. She kind of did my job for me. I'll take you through a very quick pictorial uh, <coughs> display of the property just so we can get our eyes on the bounds of the parcel that we're, try that we're asking to subdivide. We're trying to create uh, essentially one more lot. Uh, and I would like to clarify, so in talking with the applicant this evening, who is here also, uh, Mr. Elia, he's the manager of uh, New England Homebuyers LLC. Um, 
we're now requesting to leave the existing home um, on the lot. And if the applicant were to decide to raise that house in the future, that would be subject to all of the zoning and subdivision ordinance as addition to all of the code enforcement ordinance at that time. So um, just a slight tweak that we just talked about um, right before uh, the meeting started. So let me take you through this quickly and then I'll bring up Mr. Fowler and he can walk you through the plans. All right, so these images were taken the day of um, technical review uh, at the beginning of the month. Uh, so they're relatively current. This is just from Google Earth and just trying to get everyone oriented on Rocky Hill with the property generally. The red dot is from Google. The big blue arrow is my failed attempt at graphic art. This is taken from the city's GIS software. Um, and you can just see the bounds of the lot. It's nothing exciting, just a big rectangle. I'm gonna have Ryan come up and uh, have you guys, you can ask him questions and he'll walk you through basically the subdivision. But as you can see, it is very simple. Um, this application fully complies with all of the city's ordinances in their entirety. And as you see from um, the material submitted, we answered all the questions from technical review and we've gotten all of the um, 911 address um, affirmation already going. So we're kind of ahead of the game in that department. So I'll bring Ryan up and he can take it from here. Good evening to the board, Mr. Chair. My name is Ryan Fowler with James Barron Associates. I'm the survey manager and the surveyor of record for this project. Um, as you, Josh, has already kind of introduced, uh, you know, it's a pretty simple application. Our intent is to basically meet the intent of the zoning ordinance uh, and adhere to the minimum requirements or exceed those minimum requirements as set forth by, by the municipality. Uh, our lot sizes are uh, meeting or exceeding the, the, the minimal standards in frontage and in uh, square footage. Uh, currently, right now, the existing structure is serviced by an on-site well. We're proposing to tie into uh, municipal water supply and uh, it'll be uh, upgraded on-site sewer systems. Um, there'll be septic designs for, for both parcels uh, to comply with um, today's regulations and needs uh, for, the, for the new property. Uh, we, we looked at... Uh, we had, a, we had our sister company, Manual Engineering, look at the driveway site distance profiles uh, to make sure that the, the new proposed driveway location uh, would meet sufficient, sufficient site distance requirements as set forth by um, the regulations. If there are any questions about, about the plans uh, in particular, I'd be happy to answer those. Uh, you done your presentation? this anymore uh, not unless uh, any of you want to look at it but we're, we're all set okay at this time I'd like to open a public hearing is there anybody in the audience that cares to comment on this application Director Mears, is there any correspondence concerning this application? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, close public hearing. Questions from the board, Mr. Witham. Thank you. Uh, oddly enough, I drive by this property maybe a half dozen times a day, maybe more. Uh, I live just up the street from here. So I, I would agree with the sight lines. I, I believe this uh, home, that the home of record that's on the parcel, was subject to a fire uh, some number of years ago and is sat in a state of somewhat disrepair uh, since then. So uh, I'm pleased to hear that there's at least a, a hope of moving this forward. Uh, I would just note for the new property owner of record, this has been the subject of some city code enforcement action with regard to property maintenance and you know, vermin and other things. So that's just an important issue to stay on top of for the, for the neighborhood here. So I'll just use this opportunity to talk about that. Um, when the site is divided, the, 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 the site that's yet to be built on, I'm assuming is to the north, if you will. 
Yeah, it would it would be the actual uh, west of the property. Correct. Uh, okay, it's west. Out. Okay, gotcha. Uh, that slopes off over there. So, ha have you guys looked at it from uh, a buildable area based upon slope? Because our, our regulations do have some slope requirements. Uh, but so it would be a buildable lot. Yep. Yeah. Um, a majority of the the, the lot, um, you, you you do have a little bit more steep slopes down towards that corner, um, the western side. But the rest of the the lot is is fairly gradual. Okay. Um, it's you, hard to see the fair. Yeah, these are one-foot contours, so they look a little bit more exaggerated than your normal two-foot contours. Okay. And that this seems to make sense. Uh, it, it, creating another buildable lot is going to improve the property that's been in a state of disrepair. Seems to make a lot of sense to me. Now, is it going to be to torn down? Um, the, the the client is is. The, 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 the client believes that it is not uh, beneficial to keep the property, the building, but right now we're looking at just trying to move the application forward and getting the, the additional lot. Um, it will either be torn down or, or renovated, uh, but we believe that the direction is, is to Yeah, I think, uh, like Ms. Mr. Witham said, the, the property had a lot of issues. Yep, yeah, it's, it's pretty rough right now. The front steps are falling off the building. There's a lot of broken glass. Uh, people have broken into it. Um, it's it's definitely not in any type of livable fashion at the moment. Now the the building on the front of the property is that a barn? That's currently a barn. Yes, sir. Other questions on the board? Mr. Mr. Belmore. I'm not going to squeeze you for a timeline, but do we have a timeline? Because usually with code issues, we issue a citation, and certain time frames have to be met. On it being either renovated or, or, or raised. So, um, what are we looking at for any time frame? Any clue at all? Okay, so, that, um, so, the applicant's intent is to assess you know, once we're through the planning process, is to essentially get into that house, assess it, and then make a decision about whether it's being renovated or whether it's being raised. And so, the intent really is to get permitted and then to start working on the property so as soon as possible. And, and to add to that, the, the, um, the client has, you know, worked on cleaning up some of the brush and stuff in the area, so he has started to take a, an interest in the property. Um, but I think right now we're waiting to see what, uh, what happens here tonight. Wait, sir, Mr. Richardson. So uh, with the new lot, which comes first, uh, either the existing home or the new home? Um, it likely concurrently. I'm sorry? It likely the construction would be concurrent, so it would be okay. done at the same time. All right, I, I was just curious because that's the way I would go. <laughs> sure, yeah, it's just probably cheaper <laughs> to have site, you know, the site work all in one shot. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Woodham, you had... Yeah, I was going to, would the applicant be amenable to a condition of approval that the uh, existing buildings be uh, secured? They probably are, but I'd like to memorialize that as a condition of approval, that they just be secured uh, so that, you know, we don't have vagrants walking in or anything of that nature. Yep, that is acceptable. Well, if the director could add that in somewhere. I think it's in their best interest as well, so. Other questions on the board? Mr. Haven, you had one. No, Mr. Haven. Way down. Yeah. So <laughs> the, the new lot, the uh, you don't have a proposed area on where the building's going to be as of yet. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, you know, we're imagining that the new dwelling would probably be somewhere up in that flat plateau area where that shed is. Most likely is probably going to be some type of drive under uh, to make the, the driveway work. Um, you know, we do have on staff engineers to, to look at that uh, if we move forward through the planning and building process on that. Um, but we wanted to see, you know, other alterations that might have to be made uh, tonight. Okay. Further questions? Mr. Rhodes. Just a question on the outbuildings here. So we've got two sheds and the barn marked on the plan. Um, What's the intent in terms of disposition of those? Do you intend to leave any of those in place, raise them all? The sheds are to be to be removed. Um, those are in disrepair. Um, 
there was talk about rehabbing the barn, but the during the technical review, um, there was a uh, discussion that if we remove the house uh, and the barn stayed, it would become a, a more non-conforming lot. Um, so we've had that discussion. That's kind of right now why we're proposing to keep the house. Uh, if, if the house does get demolished, uh, they would have to also raise the barn as well at that time or, or seek some type of relief um, for that. Yep. Kind of where I was going with that because I noticed it the barn's on compliant, I think for setbacks only, That's it wouldn't be worsened by the new lot line being drawn as long as that house remains in place. But you knock the house down, you've got a non-conforming outbuilding, try to build on the site, it gets more and more and more out of compliance. Yep. So as long as that's dealt with. Thank you. Any other questions on the board? Entertain a motion for uh, regional impact. Mr. Rhodes. I'll make a motion that this request does not have regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Rhodes. Second. Second by Mr. Belmore. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? This time I turn to Director Mears for review of conditions. Yes, uh, plan revisions, update the sheet. V1 note 12 to include the two uh, caliper trees per lot shall be planted prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy. Update sheet C1 note 11 to clarify that all utilities shall be installed underground. Uh, also, uh, existing buildings shall be secured as required by code compliance. Conditions that must be met prior to final approval. The final plan shall bear the stamp and signature of a licensed land surveyor. Monumentation granite balance shall be installed at all intersections of the lot lines and street rights of way, as well as the property corners, which do not abut the public right of way per subdivision regulation. A surveyor is required to submit a signed letter to the planning department stating the new lot corner monuments have been set prior to rec recording. Conditions to be completed prior to the start of site work. Erosion controls will be needed to be installed along Rocky Hill Road uh, side of the property and the site shall be stabilized while under construction. Erosion controls shall be properly maintained throughout construction. And <coughs> the construction entrance shall be required to be installed and maintained until pavement has been completed. All service connections from the utility overhead lines shall be installed underground. The applicant shall apply for a new water and sewer con or water connection permit and pay associated fees. The development will require new addresses. Please submit a request for a new address to the city engineer. Uh, applicant will need to apply for a driveway permit with the Department of Public Works in conjunction with a building permit for the new house lot. Residential driveway widths can be no wider than uh, 22 feet. Conditions applicable during and after construction. The accessory barn structure is considered a non-conforming structure because it does not meet the required setbacks. Non-conforming structures shall not become more non-conforming non-conforming structures where the primary use of the lot is residential single family and the single family dwelling is proposed to be raised the accessory structures on the lot will be required to be removed at the same time unless the applicant uh, decides to keep the existing house there shall be no uh, wet, uh, wetlands degradation we should have removed that sorry that's it thank you any discussion on the conditions mr belmore i may have missed it but under uh Conditions that must be met prior to final approval. Final plan shall bear the stamp and signature of licensed land surveyor. And I, I may have missed it. Did you also say it needed a wetland scientist stamp? Yes, but that needs to be removed. So that should be removed? Yes. Uh, that's what I want to make clarification on, just for the record. So strike wetland scientist, okay? Thank you. Any other questions on the conditions? Entertain a subdivision motion. Mr. Witham. Thank you. I'd move that they request a New Hampshire Home Buyers LLC in care of Bruton and Barra be, uh, be for the minor subdivision approval to divide one residential lot into two residential lots. Assessor's map 26, lot 7 be approved with the conditions as outlined. Second. Motion made by Mr. Witham, seconded by Mr. Belmo. A discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Subdivision passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and the board. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I 
Any other new business that may come before the board, Director Majors? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Item five, workshop business. Item A, revision of subdivision regulations, chapter 22. Director Mayors? Yes, so you should have all received uh, the memo regarding the subdivision regulation update. Planning staff and the Department of Public Works have been working uh, to review the current subdivision regulation and update various sections of the regulation. I did provide a summary of changes. Uh, the first change is uh, proposed revision to condo conversions to require conversions of two units to submit formal paperwork to the city and three or more units to go through the planning board for review and approval. Uh, there's some housekeeping items regarding titles that were updated. Uh, we added some additional language for conceptual reviews. Also updated some RSA languages. Requirements for final plans were also updated. New language for deeds to be provided with final lot line adjustment plans. New language regarding surface elevations, grades, contours to be submitted with minor and major subdivisions. Uh, new language to require soil erosion and sedimentation control plans to be submitted. Currently, uh, we don't require that. Requirements to provide truck turning movements uh, with all major subdivisions. New language regarding lots with steep land, areas with high water table and floodplains. Removal of language regarding extra frontage on corner lots in addition of language that ir irregular lots are discouraged. Update that the parking shell also follow site plan review regulation requirements as necessary, such as multifamily development. Uh, removal of outdated information regarding connections to sewer and to be consistent with the sewer use ordinance. Revisions to stormwater management to follow site plan review regulations. That was sort of the uh, basis for updating the subdivision regulations. Currently, we uh, don't require um, stormwater to be treated in, in subdivisions, so this would require a treatment of stormwater. Uh, to clarify that the required trees landscaping shall be uh, on private property, to remove the utilities committee and revise with the site review technical committee, to indicate the requirements of Eversource fixtures are required for street lights to become accepted as city infrastructure and requirements of street lighting to be turned on at certain time frame of development as determined by planning board. This came up with a recent uh, subdivision uh, of when the street lights should be turned on. Uh, we actually get complaints a lot from residents about, about this issue of safety concerns for street lights, so we would want that to be a condition of approval. Uh, clarify LED street lights are required. To clarify that sidewalk improvement connections may be required as an offsite improvement. To clarify that the city of council approves street names. To clarify that street s signage shall be approved by the public works director. And to revise uh, the surety bond requirements from uh, 25 to six, and that's specifically the two year maintenance bond that we require after street acceptance. Uh, to revise the four-year exemption to five-year exemption to be consistent with the RSA, to revise inspection language to be consistent with the site plan inspection requirements, um, and also to update uh, various pavement and sideway specifications requirements. So at this time, we're looking for feedback from the planning board and a public hearing will need to be scheduled to approve the proposed amendments. Mm -hmm. Questions from the board? Mr. Richardson and Mr. Witham. <coughs> yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I made a note to myself on page 24 um, at our last meeting to look through this a little bit more thoroughly, but I had a question about the, about the cul-de-sac where it says that the plantings won't obstruct view. And the note to myself was to look elsewhere about plantings anywhere not being allowed to obstruct view. And what you were just reading talked about plantings being on private property. But we've all seen as we drive through town, private property plantings, when you come to an intersection, obstructs views. So who's responsible for cutting those back and if they're on private property and making things safe so that we don't have obstructed views? So and again, I made a note to go through it more thoroughly to my, with myself, but 
neglected to do that. So, so this was added uh, as requested by the Department of Public Works to, because currently uh, some of the subdivisions have trees within the right of way, so it's a responsibility of the city to maintain these trees. So uh, that was a request from the Department of Public Works. So it would be uh, private homeowner's responsibility to make sure that they're pruned. And add anything, Dana? If do we have enforcement for that, or how does that ha handled? I I'm thinking particularly of Stackpole Road, where it comes into uh, Green but Street, looking towards Rollinsford. That's often way overgrown, and you can't see to the right. You have to kind of poke your nose out of your vehicle into mm -hmm. the street, and so a problem. So in the past, um, code compliance has worked on those issues uh, with the Department of Public Works on okay. site distance. And does the city st does city staff have the right to um, go in there? I mean, if, if the if the property owner isn't doing it and it's in the right of way, I mean, doesn't city staff have the right to go in there and, and trim back? Within the right of way, but not on private property. Right. We require the private. Uh, yeah, because I'm sure the intersection owner. that that Mr. Richardson is talking about, most of it is right of way. I would suspect. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so that's kind of a gray area, I would suppose. Thanks. Mr. Willem. Thank you. Uh, page 25, 26, when you were talking about subdivision street lighting, um, I know of a couple subdivisions. I've gotten some calls on them about their street lights. The issue is, is that they're on timers, and they're in a box somewhere. And unless you have a homeowner that's dialed into that, when the clocks get set back in the fall, no one goes and adjusts that, so it stays dark on the street until 6.30 p.m., and uh, which then works in the summertime. You get the calls this time of year because the timer's off. The way to eliminate that is to put in our subdivision regulations that all street lighting will be on a photo cell, not on a timer. So I might suggest that we work that in, that they have to be photo cell activated. All city lights are photo cell. They're not timers. So I think it's a simple solution. That way we don't have to chase it. 25, 26, it kind of rolls over. Mr. Baltimore. Yeah, on lighting also under two. Um, I don't know why we're adding all that wording. I'd like to condense it somehow. How the, it, it just seems to be boxing the city in, and there may be ex exceptions. Regarding once the street is accepted by the council, the city will assume responsibility. It's sort of redundant, but then it gets into ever source decorative light poles and fixtures. I think that's just going to confuse the issue. I, I don't know why we're doing all that. I kind of sense I know why we're doing it, but I don't know that it's absolutely needed. I think it just needs to be tidied up or just eliminated. Mr. Horton. Uh, thanks. I I, uh, I gave it a review. I I like all the revisions that were made, especially to the uh, a lot of the pavement um, requirements. So updating the old gravel specs and stuff like that was certainly uh, needed. But uh, I, I recommend or uh, I agree with uh, moving it forward for um, public hearing. Any further discussion? Entertain a motion to send it to public hearing. Was that one? So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Witham. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Any other workshop business? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. Communications and miscellaneous. Uh, Director Mears, the housing. Task force. Yes. Uh, so the mayor has announced a mayor's housing task force. This is a mayoral commission will work to examine a variety of ways that Summers North can change its ordinances and regulations to incentivize smart housing solutions that match the needs of our community, positively partner the city with developers, um, lost our economic growth, and work to develop solutions that can lower 
the cost of living for, fa for working families here in Summers Earth. It will work to inform the mayor of possible recommendations and coordinate with city staff, uh, county officials, and regional housing es experts. Uh, and make suggestions to the planning board as they begin developing the uh, housing master plan chapter. Uh, we need a member from the planning board to serve on this committee, so. By the chair. Appointed by the chair. Is there anybody interested in being on the task force? Oh, yeah. we can <laughs> Paul, <laughs> Paul, he's a good member. <laughs> Mr. Horton? At this time, I'll appoint Mr. Horton as the uh, representative of the planning board to the housing task force. No further action needs to be taken uh, as far as a vote. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Still Any other communications, Mr. Miscellaneous, Mr. Witham? Yeah, under miscellaneous. Uh, uh, I, I guess I've uh, turned it into my sort of planning board pinata because I got to whack at them uh, every meeting. Uh, but I draw city staff attention back to the car wash that remains under construction on High Street. Um, to the north side of the property, the Walmart side of the property, are the vacuum cleaner stations. Uh, each one of the arms has like an LED light strip, uh, which is rather bright and obnoxious. I don't believe they are downlit. They certainly are not shielded. Uh, so. I don't remember having those discussions or waiving that, so yet another gremlin for that particular project. Thank you. Ms. Berry? Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, so I was approached by the mayor regarding a potential committee that might be forming up for the master plan. I don't know if that's official or if that's really on the books yet. Maybe it's not even on anyone's radar, but um, he did approach me personally about it, and I advised him that he speak with you directly, Mr. Chair, on this. Um, when the time comes to put it out like we did for the uh, for the task force that we did tonight. Um, I will put my name in uh, as the representative of the uh, 2030 committee. It would make sense to put my name in there. So um, consider me um, at least in the running for that. Okay, thank you. Mr. Horton. Sure, I have two closing comments for tonight. Uh, I got to uh, point out the fact that the traffic is so much better coming up through High Street since the lights have been upgraded and uh, signalized uh, accordingly. So huge improvements there. Additionally, uh, just taking a ride down through town uh, a couple weeks ago and noticed that uh, we got some new street signs there that uh, look really nice too. So uh, uh, good things happening all around. So there you go. Any other communications or miscellaneous? Mr. Belmore. I would just ask the... Um, the director, I think the master plan comes under the purview of the planning board. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that, that there won't be a, uh, public uh, input sessions and that sort of thing where any member of the public can participate, but I think it maybe uh, the director can, at the next meeting, provide us a little memo in regards to what's being what she's already undertaken with grants and what's being planned to try to plug into the budget to move forward with some master plan uh, updates. That would be appreciated. Thank you. Any other communications? Entertain a motion to adjourn. Are we going to read through this tonight? Or? <laughs> 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 You're more than welcome. <laughs> I think I'll be a quiz next month. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Belmore. All those in favor, raise your right hand. <laughs>